It's hard to start a review without working out exactly how the brand name is pronounced. Whilst this watch is from a company based in Sweden, it's founded by two Dutchmen. First I assumed that men simply meant men, which is the plural of man in Swedish. That would be fairly limiting though, since is there really such a thing as male female watches these days? So it turns out men in Dutch means moon. So what we're talking about here is a Dutch moon watch from Sweden that also happens to be heavily inspired by New York. Since the Dutch quote unquote discovered Manhattan, which was named New Amsterdam for a while, this makes sense. The ship that got them there was called the Halve Man or Half Moon. So there we go. Brand influence is clarified. Perhaps we can now get on with this review. The Man Greenwich 38 GMT is a watch I've been keen to check out for some time now, and the company kindly lent me one for this review. They did so by the way without any influence on this video and I've not seen it until it goes live. It's easily the most attractive one they've released so far and has been very well received. If you're about to buy one or are simply man curious, I will attempt to answer some questions for you today, like the ones I had. Is that fashionable size of 38mm okay on a large wrist? And if so, how does it wear? How does that big bold design work in real life? And would I buy one? Let's get stuck in. So easily the biggest or possibly smallest elephant in the room for me is the size. I absolutely understand all sides of the argument of watch sizes. I agree that watches grew and grew and got a bit ridiculous for a while. Is there really a place for large 42 to 44 millimeter watches that wear like dumbbells on your wrist? I think there is a super fine line here. In my case, I'm nearly 190 centimeters tall or 6 feet 2. I spend a fair amount of time at the gym and I have a 19 centimeter wrist. So if anyone can get away with wearing large watches, I'm a candidate. I still feel anything larger than 42 is unnecessarily big, particularly since they tend to be thick also. But what about the opposite? Could I wear a 38mm watch? Let's remember here that only a few decades ago a 38mm watch was considered large, regardless of your body or wrist size. So it really is all about perspective. Putting this watch on, it does wear pretty well on my wrist. That large oversized crown, the big bold markers and long lugs ensures that it is proportional. I've made my mind up, it's too small for my taste, but it is all about perspective here. And you may look at these images and completely disagree with me and that's absolutely fine. In fact, I'm glad if that's the case, since I like the watch. I'm keen to hear what you think about this in the comments. So whilst we're on the case, this is a brushed case with some polished details such as the beveled lugs, which are drilled by the way, making watch straps very easy. There's a lovely step up bezel, almost like a mini staircase up to the flat sapphire glass. The first step is brushed and the second, which immediately surrounds the dial, is polished. This creates an eye-catching reflection when wearing the watch. Any light source does create a little mini moon on your wrist and I really like this effect. One small downside is that it seems dust accumulates easily on these edges and are more visible than normal on a watch. Perhaps it's just me since I'm constantly polishing and blowing air on watches for photographing and dust is the absolute bane of my existence oh, anyway. I think even if you're not a macro photographer like me, which is basically a masochist hobby, you might still notice dust more than on your other watches due to the small edges and crevices here. The oversized crown is really cool. I like that it's easy to grip and sign with the M logo. You'll be using this crown not just for the date, winding and time setting, but also a rather unusual GMT function. More on that shortly. This enamel dial is, and I'm going to use some Australian here, bloody great. It feels like looking into a large lake at night with a slight impenetrable reflection. All these hands reflect nicely, not just on a close-up like this, but to your normal eyesight as well. The several layers of anti-reflective coating adds to my lake analogy, since you do get a slight blue haze from many angles. All the print on this dial is clean and crisp and legible, with perhaps one exception. 
My eyesight is going a little, but those 1 to 24 markings are tiny. That doesn't bother me really, and I'd rather have small than pointlessly large, so all good. The minute and hour hands use men's signature skyscraper hands. It's a cool design, and I totally see the New York reference there once again, since Manhattan to me has always been the most prominent example of dense skyscrapers. They stand out really well. The Lollipop Seconds Hand is also very easy to see both day and night, and sweeps nicely across the dark lake. So this orange hand then. Just in case you're not familiar with GMT functions, let's touch on that first. It's basically a hand that takes 24 hours to move around the dial, and you can set that to match another time zone. In my case, friends and family in Europe is worth tracking. All GMT movements I've used in the past have had clicks of every hour and half hour as you move the hand. This hand has none and you can simply move it to see it wherever you want. The company behind this movement are called Swiss Tech and have a modest 40 years in this ancient industry. I'm no expert on movements, but it does feel a little odd to have a completely free moving GMT hand, but the functionality is the same, so this is just an observation more than anything. Legibility of the orange GMT hand is perfect. You will have no issues working out if your overseas friends are asleep or awake. Flipping the watch over, we'll see very little. We get the one of 300 text on the plane back, which covers up the Swiss Tech S24 045. Who knows what that looks like, but it does have an adequate power reserve of 40 hours. It's also quite clearly compact since the watch is only 10.5 mm thick or 12 mm with a sapphire glass. The 10 ATM or 100 m water resistance would help keeping it compact also. Before we discuss the loom, a word on straps. The tropical strap that is supplied by men is good. It's one of the better ones I've handled with soft material and a sign buckle. I just don't care for tropical straps and I put it on this Artemis canvas strap that I had lying around. I'll link in the description. It suits it well in my opinion, as they are some of, if not the best, canvas straps around. There is also a fitted rubber strap from Men that certainly looks a little like a certain other Swiss brand's fitted strap option. I would have loved to check that out, but you'll have to visit the website for that one. Now to the loom. In use here is the, and I quote, Swiss Super Luminova with superior grade X1 quality. It may be X1 quality, but it's not particularly great in my opinion. Perhaps since the markets are so large and bold, you expect this to be an absolute loom pig, but it's far from it. When charged up with the UV torch, it's certainly bright, but it fades quickly. I don't want to go on about it since it's definitely legible throughout the night, but as some of my report cards said back in the day, there is room for improvement here. Perhaps to stop people like me moaning about it, a few extra layers of coating is all that's needed on the Mark II version of this watch. Now I think this is a seriously attractive and wearable watch. It's bold, compact and very good value at around 640 euro. It looks like nothing else released over the last few years, and you have some interesting color and texture combinations available. You can have a textured blue dial or this same black one with red markers, which changes the look completely. It genuinely would fit almost any wrist size, and I would be interested to see how that polished bezel would look with some wear. I think it will age beautifully. The small niggle of the loom should not stop you from buying this great watch, with so much personality at very good value. But what do you think? Is it for you? Leave me a comment, I'll read them all. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.